relive the greatest moments in the history of America's favorite sports cars. The Mustang, including vintage commercials, rare footage of the original prototype, and its creators. See Restored Classics and the story behind its phenomenal success that turned Mustang into a legend. The Thunderbird, including vintage commercials, restored classics, rare footage of its creators, as well as a look at the evolution of luxury cars from the Model A in 1903 through the 30s, 40s, and 50s, all the way up to the Thunderbird. Share the fantasy of the classic cars you've always loved. This is the home video that automotive fans have been waiting for, from Best Film and Video. the shapes and sizes of the automobile have gone through some radical changes as it evolved from utilitarian means of transportation to high-styled luxury dream car. The square shape rounded out. In the 1950s, a startling change occurred, America's first sports car. January 1953 at GM's Motorama at the Waldorf Astoria, the Corvette was born. It was such a hit, people lined up for over 30 minutes just to get a glimpse of America's first and many say only sports car. It came as a convertible in polo white with a sportsman red vinyl interior. There were 300 built in 1953, but only 180 sold for just over $3,000, weighing in at 2,900 pounds with a top speed of 108, reaching 60 miles per hour from a stop in 11 seconds. Its engine was a straight six, named the Blue Flame. This is a 1953 Corvette promotional film made by Chevrolet to show off its new sports car. Notice that the driver has to reach inside to open the door because it came without door handles. However, in addition to the speedometer, it had a tachometer to measure engine revolutions. Harley Earl, Zora Arcus Duntoff, Bill Mitchell and Ed Cole are considered the fathers of the Corvette. Harley Earl and Ed Cole created the car, Zora Duntoff joined the team during the first year, and Bill Mitchell followed close behind and in 1959 succeeded Earl as head of styling. Harley Earl and Ed Cole wanted to design a car to compete with the European sports cars, such as Jaguar, Porsche, Mercedes, and Ferrari. They hoped to keep the price down by using existing Chevrolet parts and chassis. This made for an exceedingly difficult design problem. They missed their desired price range of $1,800, but they knocked everyone's socks off. Because of a lengthy aluminum strike, the very first Corvettes were made of a revolutionary new material, glass reinforced plastic, GRP, which became a permanent part of the Corvette. In 
1954, 3,265 were built, 2,780 sold, and they were all convertibles. In 1955, 700 were built with the innovative 265 cubic inch V8 engine, the first Chevrolet V8 since the war. Nineteen fifty six could have been the end of the Corvette, but Zora Duntoff helped create a new design which included the trademark side indentation. Available for the first time was an optional hardtop. In 1957, a fuel injection system designed by John Doza and Zora Duntoff with optional four-speed transmission were added. Racing at Sebring, it won in its class, 20 laps ahead of the nearest Mercedes 300. This win put it in the history books. In 1958, there were five engine sizes, 9,000 sold and more chrome was added. Here you see a lineup of Corvettes from 1953 through 1958. 1959 had less chrome and better suspension at a price from $3,875 up to $5,127. Bill Mitchell succeeded Harley Earl as head of styling. Mitchell was an enthusiastic supporter of racing Corvettes but in 1957, GM and the other big car manufacturers decided supporting racing was too costly and agreed not to compete. Luckily, not everyone followed this edict strictly to the letter. In 1963, a major styling change occurred, as this comparison shows. Revamped, the Corvette appears as the Stingray. It was an instant hit, doubling Corvette production. Its design, influenced by aerodynamics, was the flattened wedge, split rear window, pop-up headlamps, cut-off rear, and recessed taillights. The rear window divider makes the few unaltered ones very collectible. Available as a convertible or a coupe, it remains one of the most exciting cars ever built. Because of GM's racing ban in 1957, Mitchell, out of his own pocket, along with other Corvette engineers, continued to support racing, doing it out the back door. Racing has always had an influence on the design and engineering of the car. In 1960, the Corvette competed at the 24-hour Le Mans race and came in eighth, alongside Porsche, Ferrari, and Mercedes. This 1963 film was shot at the General Motors Grand Prix Proving Grounds. A group of Chevrolet research and development engineers and Zora Arcus Duntov, staff engineer in charge of high-performance vehicles, here flanked by two well-known Corvette drivers, Dr. Dick Thompson and Dave McDonald, are about to evaluate a new all-American sports car, the Corvette Stingray. The Stingray was an outgrowth of the Q car prototypes, begun in 1957. Notice that Stingray was spelt in two words at this time.
tried just what you said, the acceleration around the hundred. Yeah, very definitely an improvement. Yeah, it really so. Acceleration from a dead yeah. stop. Oh, it's really fantastic. Yeah. It's really got what it takes to come on. Yeah. And I uh, couldn't spin the rear wheels. When I got out here, I stepped on it first as hard as I could, and it didn't spin. No, but then you're independent. Yeah. Yours, could you break loose? Not at all. How was the high speed stability? Oh, very good. Well, this car really looked good. I was falling, you know, up at high speed, well over 100, and it really looked nice. Just solid, so it was nice. Beautiful up there. So, well, naturally, we're in love with it, but it's kind of you a giant car, that's yeah. That's what's important. Uh, the improvement's well, impressive. It's what we've been waiting for. In the 60s, Carroll Shelby's Cobras were a great threat in racing. However, the Corvette beat the Cobras at Riverside at their first meeting in 1963. And in 1964, Roger Penske's Corvette sailed to victory in Nassau. For the Stingray owner, red or silver with leather seats, positraction rear axle, and black wall tires on alloy wheels were the only way to go. The 1964 Corvette had a single rear window and a smoother, quieter ride. In 1965, all-around disc brakes and power reigned supreme. The Corvette had an optional 396 CID porcupine head engine boasting 425 horsepower, dubbed Turbojet 396, and an 11 to 1 compression ratio. In 1966, fuel injection was dropped as too costly. In 1968 marked a styling change influenced by the Mako Shark II, which had been an experimental model and show car since 1965. A convertible was available with a removable top. Note the radical changes in design from the 1953 1957, 1964, and the 1968. The Corvette has always been a style leader. The 1968 had a tunneled roof with removable panels, sloping front end and rear spoiler, and proved immensely popular. It went to 100 miles per hour from a dead stop in 20 seconds. In 1969, the Stingray, as one word, arrived. A two-month strike held up production, which generally ended in October. So John Z. DeLorean gave orders to continue production longer, producing 38,000 cars, and in a blaze of publicity, the 250,000th car was sold. 1970 Corvette won car and driver's poll as the most popular car, had a manual four-speed transmission and 390 horsepower 454 LS5 V8, the largest Corvette engine ever. However, due to emission controls, it had less power than the 427 cubic inch engine, which delivered 435 horsepower at 5800 RPM. In this 1970 Chevrolet promotion film, the red Camaro hardtop takes on the white Corvette convertible. The 1970 model differed little from the 1969, a slight change in shape for the hood bulge and hood vents. The Corvette came with 8-inch wheels which were more suited to the racetrack than the street, improving handling at high speeds. Even the Corvette's suspension and chassis responded best between 80 and 120 miles per hour, due in large part to Duntoff's commitment to drivers who enjoy speed. It had been 17 years since the first Corvettes, named after a World War II friendship, had rolled off the assembly line in Flint, Michigan on June 30, 1953. In 
1972 had only three engine options, the smallest number since 1963, and fewer additional options. Nineteen seventy four had a styling change as this comparison between the white nineteen seventy three and orange seventy four point out. Nineteen seventy six, the death of the convertible, luckily not forever, but for ten long years. The nineteen seventy eight Corvette again had a styling change wrap-around fastback, reminiscent of the 63 Stingray. It was its silver anniversary, and two special limited edition cars were produced, which were collector cars right off the line. The silver anniversary and the Indy Pace Car replica. 1982 marked the end of another Corvette generation with a custom exterior and interior, glass hatchback, and cross-fire injection 5.7 liter V8 engine. In 1983, another styling change occurred. Derived from a design known as the AeroVet, it came from research in the Boeing wind tunnel and produced a more aerodynamic car. Also, rack and pinion steering was added. Comparison between the classic 1953 convertible representing the first Corvette and the present style maker, a burgundy 1988 convertible representing today. Corvette fans have a choice of magazines devoted to it. Corvette has a mystique. And today, hundreds of national and international Corvette clubs and classic car associations hold regular meets to share and compare cars, parts, history, and experiences, and sometimes to compete for trophies. At this historic meet, every production-style Corvette from every year from 1988 back to 1953 was brought together by Corvettes on the Mall, a California Corvette Club, on March 27, 1988. This has never been accomplished before. It gives a wonderful comparison of the styling evolution the Corvette has gone through. Often called the American Ferrari, it's the ultimate dream car. Many Corvette owners modify their cars. This black beauty has no door handles. It uses solenoid switches, and the door has been remolded to fit more snugly. The special paint job is a subtle two-tone of plum black and black. This red Corvette has its own special name and a trailer to carry it to shows. Proudly, by use of mirrors, it reveals its underneath. Everything is perfect. Definitely not a car to take out in bad weather. This 1982 modified beauty has a unique paint job that even carries under the hood. It has won many trophies and is obviously a hard car to beat in this category. A higher sense of individuality is sought by these unique Corvette owners.
The Corvette Indy show car, AeroVet prototype, and other rarely seen prototype photos and drawings from the design staff at General Motors. The Mako Sharks design came from a shark caught by Bill Mitchell, mounted and brought back to Larry Shinoda, who stylized the shark's jaw and teeth, and even the coloring, which was a gradation from light gray to dark blue. The story goes that the paint shop repainted Mitchell's shark to match the car. From its beginning in 1953 through today, the Corvette has always fired the imagination. It represents style, speed, and freedom. Get your motor running Head out on the highway Looking for adventure And whatever comes our way Chevrolet created the Corvette, but its enthusiasts, the collectors, the restorers, and those who can only dream of owning one, made it a classic and ensure that the legend continues. Yeah.